think we're going to get started. Thank you for joining us for the last workshop of the day on NASA's WorldView tool for making data-driven naps. I'm going to introduce to you our panelists. We have Ryan Bowler here. And in the audience roaming will be Minnie Wong to help you with questions. She's in the back. Wave. And we also have Jennifer Brennan. They're all here from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer, and she's going to tell you a little bit about the logistics of the this okay. workshop. OK, welcome, everybody. So during today's workshop, we will have a series of hands-on exercises. Um, to start off with, we'll, we'll have a few slides as an introduction. What you need to do um, first is go to worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov. And I'm going to provide the Wi-Fi information next and then tell you that we also have Worldview team members, if you could raise your hands over there. So as we're going through the exercises, if you have any questions, uh, someone will bring the mic over. Or if you're having any difficulty following through the exercise, please raise your hand and either um, I will come by, Minnie will come by, or one of the Worldview team members will come by. So for the Wi-Fi, we have a separate Wi-Fi for this room. You're going to be looking for the network name press underscore AGU. And the access code is impact. Is it case specific, Ronnie, or capital I, impact at 2018? All right. All right, and with that, I will turn it over to Ryan for an introduction. And again, if you have any questions or any issues, please raise your hand and we will be there to help. So thanks for coming. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Jennifer, and thank you all for being here. I'm really excited to present to you uh, NASA Worldview and how you can use it in your stories. And so um, this is a, a team effort here, and we have several team, as Jennifer pointed out. Um, and this is also a, sort of a pilot for us. We haven't done one of these workshops before, so we appreciate any kind of feedback that you guys can provide to us. Uh, all positive feedback only, please. That would be appreciated, but <laughs> negative feedback too is fine. So, uh, so yeah, so let's get started. Um, so start off with this pretty image here of, uh, of nighttime imagery. Uh, this is Hurricane Irma from last year uh, as it approaches the uh, southeast coast of the US. So you should have a packet with you. Uh, and in that packet, you have um, some steps for the workshop that we'll go through uh, shortly. Uh, but also at the top of that um, same uh, sheet, you have uh, links to the slides and links to the app as well. So um, when you see the slides, you'll have different kinds of images on there that you can go directly to from, uh, from the slides, so in the notes section of the slides. So, so, um, so anyway, the objectives for today. So uh, we want to sh show you how to make a map and embed it in your stories, um, how to animate events over time, uh, and also show you how to compare to uh, imagery uh, before and after. Um, this is that same storm, by the way, on the right, uh, showing some rainfall data overlaid on the, uh, on the standard reflectance imagery. So start by saying, well, what is NASA Worldview? So it's a web app that we developed uh, over the past uh, roughly seven years or so. And the idea is to be able to visually search and look for what you, you're really interested in and, uh, and download the imagery, download the data. Everything's free and open. NASA has a free and open data policy. Um, and so we encourage you to, to use it as you see fit. The imagery uh, is updated every day and, um, uh, and, and it's available globally. Um, and also within uh, several hours of it being acquired from the satellite, you're able to see it within the app. So, so if there's you know, hot events that are happening right now, you can often see them within the app within three or so hours. Um, this has been developed uh, at Goddard Space Flight Center as well as the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It's a collaboration between the two NASA centers. So originally we developed this for, for the government, academia, and industry, but we really found that the public picks up on this a lot. So you see a lot of social media use, but then also a lot of media use already. So I'll show you some, uh, some examples of how other journalists have used Worldview in the past. And so uh, here's an example in the New York Times. Um, and just a couple of things I want to point out uh, before I, I show the article. Um, the satellite imagery, I think, really helps to set the stage here for, for the, the whole article. Uh, and also shows imagery from the ground that connect it to sort of the, the larger picture that, that can be seen in Worldview. Uh, the article also includes uh, a permalink directly to Worldview in, in the scene that's being shown in the, in the article. So the users can explore that, that data set even more if they like. So, with this, this is a video of somebody browsing. This is me browsing the article here. So you can see uh, what the article looks like. Um, it starts with 
the actual agriculture burning at the top. Um, goes into some descriptions. Um, then it shows this map of the fires and the smoke and, and the scale of how large and how widespread they are. And you go further down and it shows what that means to people in the cities. So uh, within this article though, there's a link to, uh, to Worldview itself. So I'll click that and that lets the users um, basically go to this interactive map, uh, pan and zoom as they like. They can turn the fires off and on, change the dates and sort of uh, personalize it to what their interests are. And so I'll show you how to get basically to this stage uh, here shortly. Uh, one more example I'll show uh, how it's been used by the media. This is a Discover Magazine blog. Um, so uh, in this particular one, they show before and after um, a particular event. And uh, what they do is they start with the visualization and they, go, they dig deeper into the uh, analysis, which is pretty similar to what a scientist uh, would do, or one workflow at least for a scientist. So in this case, they're looking at how sea ice uh, near Alaska is different than this particular year. It's actually shrinking rather than growing when it should. So it's this combination of uh, reflectance imagery, which I'll get into in a minute, and then the sea ice coverage here, which is uh, in the blue. And so it's showing this, this decline, uh, like I said, where it should be growing, getting into the northern, northern hemisphere winter. And so, uh, so then it shows this sort of, this chart that shows that it's actually declining there, where all the other years um, it should actually be growing. And actually then it connects to the ground to say, well, what, what does that mean practically? It means that this, this tanker can actually sail right through this ocean, whereas before, uh, it could have it needed an icebreaker in front of it to get through. Um, so other, other just brief examples here um, uh, across the board. It's also um, been used in, uh, in television as well. Uh, as I mentioned, social media as well. I picked up on this for users of social media. So, um, so you know, anybody can go to the app and, and find interesting things. On the left, this is an aurora, the North Pole, looking at sort of nighttime imagery. The middle scene is flooding before and after. Um, and on the right is uh, the Canadian wildfire authorities showing how widespread the smoke is from, from storms in British Columbia. So to tie all that together, so uh, what we've seen to be the key uses of worldview to be have been setting the stage, the stage and scale for a, a story, showing a before and after an event, and uh, also giving you a, a platform to do your own investigation to see any kind of new stories that you might be able to find um, that you might not have been able to, to see otherwise. So with that, let me give you a brief tour of Worldview itself, and then we'll jump into the exercises. Um, so I will go to this website, worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov. I think I'm full screen already, no? Yep. All right. So uh, when you go in, uh, you'll get this opportunity to take a tour. Um, I'll skip that for now, but it basically it'll walk you through some, some basic operations. So uh, it's a pretty sort of standard pan and zoom kind of map like you would see in Google Earth, Google Maps. Um, you can you know, pan and zoom. Uh, it's a big difference here though compared to other kind of, kind of solutions. Um, you have this, this slider on the bottom here that um, adjusts the, the time and the date. So, it starts off with today, and so this is basically what the Earth looks like uh, today. Um, and you'll see that basically half the world isn't filled in yet over here towards the west, and that's because the satellite hasn't gotten there yet. Um, but I'll actually zoom into this area. It's a little bit cloudy today, but if you look back at yesterday, I think it's pretty dramatic. Uh, you can see that the snowfall that we had here uh, over the last, uh, over the weekend basically, has this pretty, pretty sharp cutoff there. And this is, this is from uh, one of our satellites. This is, the, this is from the Terra satellite. Um, we have about 800 different products, and I'll kind of show you how to navigate that shortly. Um, but this is basically what you would see if you were in orbit flying in space. This is, uh, this is what's called a corrected reflectance layer. So anyway, so on the bottom we have the timeline. Uh, on the left we have this layer control panel, which is, if you're familiar with Photoshop and that sort of uh, uh, photo editing software, you can have different layers on top of each other, turn them, all, uh, turn them off and on. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, I'll go through a little bit of this panel on the left. We have this uh, natural events tab. And uh, what we can do is we can list all the, uh, basically, a listing of natural events that are happening right now across the globe. And so um, you can look at things like tropical cyclones, icebergs, um, fires. And so I'll, I'll click on this, 
this fire event in this case, and it'll pan and zoom to that, that point in time and space, and it'll basically show you uh, that event uh, as it's happening, or in this, in this case, as it has happened uh, last month. Uh, other quick things to, to run through, uh, which I'll also show in the demo, uh, we have different map projections, so we can look at the, the North Pole here. It's, it's dark up there right now, which is what that giant uh, black hole is. But if I go back in time to uh, some summertime, that'll fill in. Likewise, uh, you can go to the South Pole, and it was dark that time of year there. Um, and then we can also uh, capture imagery directly from the app. There's a camera icon here. Click and drag, pick the scene you want, click download, and you'll get standalone image then. That's just a random shot of sea ice there. Um, so that being said, um, let's jump into the exercises. So uh, if you haven't already, um, you can go to, to this website, worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov. Um, and what I, if you've already started tinkering around and you want to reset, you can click the uh, Worldview logo in the upper left, and that will basically reset the app to, uh, to a fresh state. So at this point, has anybody had any problems loading the app or um, any questions before we jump into the, the workshop? Okay, great. Um, okay, so um, in this first demo, or this first, first exercise, uh, we'll adjust the time, we'll try to capture an image, and we'll share a custom link. And we'll look at the wildfires that happened in California last, last month. So uh, what we can do is first uh, pan and zoom to California. Um, and then we can change the date to uh, November 8th. So you go to the bottom left corner, uh, change December to November, and go to the 8th. So what you should see at this point is uh, a pretty uh, nasty smoke plume here in Northern California. Um, and you also have this image seam here as well. And that's basically an artifact of the way the satellite uh, overpass went, where one, sat one, one orbit overlapped the next. Uh, and so if possible, you want to see if you can try to get a better scene than that. So at this point, we'll go to the, the layer panel on the left and try to adjust the layers that are there. So uh, you see there's options for base layers and overlays. We'll go to the base layers in the bottom left, and uh, you can click the next one up from the one that's turned on, which is corrected reflectance, true color, from Aqua Modus. That's basically another spacecraft that has a different orbit than the one below it. And so in this case, it's a lot clearer of a picture, and uh, that seam isn't there as well. You can also try the one above it, which is uh, the same product from a different spacecraft as well, a third spacecraft called SWOMI MPP. That one uh, is in a pretty similar orbit to Aqua, so you can see that actually it's just taken a few minutes apart. You toggle them off and on, and so you can see a little bit of change in the smoke, but and the colors as well. Um, oh, sure, okay. That's right, there's a secret Wi Fi password. Oh, okay. No, thanks for the heads up. Is it anybody else need the the repeat of the Wi-Fi password? Okay, for now. Okay, great. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be. I mean. Yeah. No. Um, okay, so anybody, any other issues to report before we keep going here? No, we just want to keep folks kind of on track. If you can't yeah. see them, then I can't. Well, no, thanks. I appreciate the, the intel there. Yeah, and feel free to stop any of us. Yes, please. Questions. We really enjoy talking about world views. Sure. I yeah. couldn't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, so what if I wanted to make a series of images and do a GIF? Okay. Uh, 
how it you're, happened. You're jumping ahead here. This is the second oh, exercise here. We'll get to that. But yes, <laughs> okay. thank you. Somebody planted him in the room. But actually, you know what, we, we, we can do that here too. We'll, we'll skip ahead a little bit in a second. But before we do that, let's get a little bit more detail on the fires. Um, so this is just the, the reflectance uh, imagery. Um, so this is a bit of the sun reflecting off of the earth and this is what we see from space. Um, but we can do more than that by looking at the active fires that are burning. So we're gonna click this orange button on the left that says add layers. What that'll do is it'll bring up a list of We've got about 800 different satellite imagery products to choose from here. So it's a lot to, to manage. Um, we have them broken down by hazards and disasters here. So uh, things like uh, ash plumes, fires, severe storms. They're also divided by science disciplines here. So uh, atmosphere, biosphere, that sort of thing. Since we're looking at hazards, we'll go to that tab, uh, click on the fires category. And these are all products that are relevant then to fires. And we'll click on the fires and thermal anomalies uh, layer set here. And so on the left, these are the different spacecraft that have uh, this product. We'll keep Aqua since that's the one that's already up there below. And I'll add the fires and thermal anomalies layer. And so when I close this panel, what should be up here now are these red dots which represent where the satellite detected these actively burning fires. So uh, everybody get that or any problems finding that? Okay, great. So what we can do now is then capture a single image to start, do basics first. Um, so you can, you can click the camera on the upper right corner and then drag out the box that, that you want. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna click out of this and I'm gonna try to get the entire smoke plume here. And I'm gonna add on the left, by default there's also things like uh, coastlines and borders uh, and, and labels as well. So I'm gonna turn those on on the left. Um, and, then, and then pick my box. And then from there you can choose some extra details like what you want the image resolution to be, uh, what the image format to be. If you're gonna bring this into a GIS client like ArcGIS or ArcMap, then you can do that here with the world file or GeoTIFF, in fact, if you want to use that. I'll just pick a JPEG, click download, and what it should bring up, take a second or two to generate. That's, it'll be a custom image for you then to download and embed however you like. Yes? Did that answer your question? Uh, and, and you talked about being able to use these in storage. Huh? <clears throat> Once we've done this, and, and you talked about us being able to create these things and use them in stories, how do we credit them? Do we say NASA? Do we say NASA Aquamotus? Do we, do sure. we have to uh, intimately care about which of the satellites is providing the data? That's a good question. I mean, it depends on your audience. Um, you know, if you want to get back to the, if they're more science oriented, then you probably do want to mention that it's from the Terra spacecraft MODIS instrument. It was observed on this day. Um, and it acquired via NASA Worldview. We'd appreciate, you know, if, if, if NASA Worldview itself was credited, but, um, you know, this is a team effort. We're just the last people to touch the imagery, but there's a lot of people that have worked to build the satellite, to bring the data down, to manage it. So we don't certainly get all the credit there. We're just trying to make it available. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's your image. Um, and also then if you want to, to uh, link to this particular scene here, there's a share button in the upper right corner and that will give you uh, so social media links as well as just a standard uh, hyperlink here that I can copy and then paste into a new browser window. And that'll bring you right back to the scene that we just went to. But if we wanted to animate this scene as well, then, I hate to cut ahead too much, this is not what we planned, but this is part of the fun of a workshop. So there's a video camera icon in the bottom left next to the timeline. And basically, that will let you set a start and end time here. You can either set that in the, this panel here on the bottom center, start and end time, or you can pick these little, uh, let me move this widget out of the way here. You can pick your start and end time with these 
sort of start and end uh, pointers. And uh, I'll click the loop button and I'll click play and it'll then preload those, those dates into memory and uh, play that image over time. And you can also, if you're not sure what you want, it might, uh, you can kind of pan and zoom while you're doing it to figure out what you want your best scene to be while it's doing that. Um, and then, if you want to export that to uh, an animated GIF, on the right, on this bottom panel, you can click and basically do the, pretty much the same thing we just did with the standard single image. You can do the same kind of drawing the, the box. Uh, click the Create GIF button. And that'll take a few seconds because it has to take a snapshot then of each of the frames that we, we selected. And it'll bring it down and it'll assemble that GIF for you. So it'll show up in your, your browser to start, but then you can just download that locally. All right, I think that was the, the first exercise. Any questions before we move on? Yes. Hi, my name is Tao Tran, and I was looking at the images, and it looks like they're distorted in the middle section. Is there okay. like a user's manual to uh, help fix that in case we come across it? That's a great point. This tool? Okay, so. Uh, we do our best to try to make the um, imagery as sort of understandable as possible, so as jargon-free as possible. So uh, each of these layers have a little I button next to them, and it'll tell you um, what's hopefully a human-readable format as opposed to a jargony sort of science format, um, although there's some de details in there as well. But the idea is to give it um, as clear of a description as possible to, as to what the limitations of the imagery uh, are, and then um, hopefully it'll answer specific questions like that as well. But, you know, something that I hadn't, I forgot to, to mention here, you can also send us feedback if you have questions. You can click the send feedback button and we'll be happy to say, well, it's blurry there because maybe it's at the very edge of the satellite swath or maybe it's a limitation of the particular product and we can help you select, you know, one that might be more appropriate for your need. The animated gifts are, seem to be kind of slow right now. Really, okay. okay. All right. Um, a follow-up question Sorry. to that is, I'm, I love this tool. This oh, sounds thanks. like a very exciting opportunity, okay, especially great. for research. Do mm -hmm. you know where the direction of this tool will be going? Yeah, sure. Actually, everybody jump ahead. Yeah, oh, this is great. No, no, thanks. We're all really excited. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, you have a couple you. slides for that, and I'll yeah, be happy to talk about those more. Sure. But you have to stick around for another 10 or 15 minutes, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, any other questions before we move on? Okay, all right. Over to the next exercise, so. Oh, sorry, yeah. Ryan, it's not actually a question. I'm Mike Carlos from NASA okay. Earth Observatory. Sure. Um, for those of you who, are, who may be a little frustrated with the timing, I can tell you we use this all the time. The site works very well. I'm not paid to promote no, this for Ryan. You, yeah. It works really well. It has more to do with the Wi-Fi in this building than it does here. Some scenes, the bigger you get, do take longer to download because you don't realize it. It looks easy, but you're consuming a lot of data. So, but yeah. it's usually very fast. This is the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate the disclaimer there. That's true, yeah, and I mean, we'll, we'll get into the metrics a little bit here, but we'll get anywhere between three, and right now we have about 20,000 users that have been coming every day, and it doesn't make any difference in terms of performance. Or, so that, hopefully any issues that you see are just local to this room, um, but, yeah. Um, Ryan, uh, my name is Christoph. Um, just one question. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, to, for beginners, there are, mm -hmm. there are quite a few sources. So okay. um, when, when I when I look at the at the different products coming from the different satellites, is there a guide or so or a rule of thumb <sighs> that you could share with us th so that we know right. which product to actually take? Because if I try them all by hand, I'll yeah. probably be retired. that would take a long time. So figure out everything's. <laughs> so I think Jeannie's gonna have an answer for that. But before she gets to it. Uh, in your uh, in your packet here, there's a um, let me pull it out here. In your glossy folded two-page handout here, in the back, 
there's a section that says useful layers for highlighting specific hazard and disaster events. So okay. the goal there is to basically uh, give you some shortcuts for at least, for at least those. Um, it's not a comprehensive list, but it's at least a starting point. Um, and I guess, do you need you have yeah, other? that's a difficult question to answer um, because the list that you get isn't particularly sorted per what you are thinking of. Uh, you can certainly go to one of the other tools we have, like Earth Data Search, where they try and do a relevancy ranking uh, based on users' input as to which data sets might be more appropriate. But right now, I think your best bet is when you pull one up is to go to the little eye icon and kind of read through that and see if that really does match what you're looking for. And actually, in this next exercise, we'll talk about a little bit about how to select imagery that's most relevant, although it's a really hard problem. Um, we've got, like I said, about 800 products in here now. There's about 8,000 NASA products overall. And so, you know, this is still, even for 800, it's an issue. It's even more if you want to get to the entire library that we have. Did you guys get call up to the Yeah, exactly. You guys have a direct line to us, too. So, but that, we, we want to solve it for everybody, though, too. So it, that's something that we, we want to get better at. Other questions? All right, next exercise. So uh, to reset the app again, you can click the, the NASA Worldview logo in the upper left. Um, and so, so we have three goals for this one, and the first one is actually exactly what Christoph just asked about finding relevant imagery. Um, we just went through the animation feature, so maybe we don't need to go through that one as much. We can do a before and after kind of uh, demo for this one as well. So uh, let's set the date. Let's well, I'll close the, the tour uh, prompt here. We can set the date. We'll look at uh, Hurricane Maria from last year. So we can set the date to 2017, uh, September 19th. Uh, and then we can zoom into the hurricane here. And this is a, you know, kind of a common situation, especially in the tropics, where you have these gaps between orbits. And so this is probably not the image that you want to embed in your article. Say, look at this, this hurricane. So we'll do the same thing we did before uh, and look at the other uh, products that are available by default here. And so on the left, we have the, the Aqua satellite that I just toggled on in the middle here. Uh, and that's a little bit better. But in this case, the Swomi MPP product here, it doesn't have those gaps uh, near the equator. And so this one, uh, is most likely going to be your best bet for hurricane kind of stories. Um, but if you also want to talk about, in this case, we'll say rain products that are relevant to the storm. Uh, and so let's try to add some rain products. So we'll go back to the Add Layers button on the left. It's the orange button in the middle. Um, and rather than looking, uh, browsing through, I can just type in rain in the search box at the top. And you still get kind of an overwhelming list here. This is a couple dozen rain products. and so. You know, we don't want you to have to, you know, click through each one, and uh, I don't have a great answer for you right now on that, so. But what we'll do here for this demo is click the first two and, and show you how you can evaluate amongst the different products that are here. So I'll, I'll click on the first two uh, products here, you can click the check boxes, um, and then close this, this panel, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see what's going on. And so I have two different layers I'm looking at now that are overlaid on the, the base layer. Um, I'm going to turn off the very top one for starters so we can look at one at a time. So in the upper left corner, there's the rain rate product I'm going to turn off. And underneath here is the, the rain rate early product from iMerge. And basically this is giving you sort of what you would see on the, your, your uh, daily news with radar imagery, looking at the intensity of rainfall. Um, and one thing you can do is uh, when you're hovering over the map itself uh, with the mouse, uh, you'll see on the left as I'm doing that, the, the values of uh, the rain rate are being updated uh, to show what that actual value is underneath the mouse cursor. So obviously the most intense part of this storm here is in the center. Um, and it, it, it can tell, you know, depending on your story, this could tell a good story for you, but um, let's check out the other product as well. So I'll go back to the panel on the left, turn off that rain rate, turn on the one at the very top, and you'll see in this case, the satellite orbit swaths don't really cover uh, the storm in this case. It's showing rain elsewhere, but not really for there. So it's probably not what you're looking for. Um, for this particular case, there are other strong points for this, this particular product, but 
for this story, it may not be the one. Um, and so I'm going to turn that one off. Um, but you know, the big story for this particular uh, storm was Puerto Rico power outages. You probably have already seen some of the nighttime imagery before and after there. But what we'll do is I'll we can add the the nighttime imagery on top of this and watch as the storm goes by in the port before and after. So I'll click the add layers again on the left. I'll delete my rain search and type in nighttime. Um, and then I'll select the very top one here, and that will bring up uh, nighttime imagery. So I'll zoom back into Puerto Rico now. Um, and since we already did a, uh, an animation, this was going to be an animation demo, um, the, big, uh, the big story here is the before and after kind of thing. And so uh, one of the features I wanted to show here is this comparison feature. So in the bottom left, there's a start comparison button. What that'll bring up is this sort of familiar uh, 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 slider here that we can do before and after. And so it's just going to pick a default here for you for what their start and end dates are, but it's going to keep the same layers that you have up. You can change the times that are being shown on both sides. So the time on the left side is the A side here. That's shown on the upper left here. That's uh, September 19th. On the right, it's the 18th. And so if I want to change the date of the 18th, you can do that a couple ways. For one, you can click on the tab in the upper left. That'll change over to the, the B side. And then I can, I can change the date to be after the hurricane passes. Um, and let's see, is there, a good, is there a good time to go after the storm? I mean, it, this is a tricky layer as well. I mean, this looks pretty dramatic, and it, it obviously was dramatic uh, in real life on the ground uh, before and after. The nighttime layer can be tricky based on if there's moon, moonlight, if there's cloud coverage, um, how far away you are from the satellite sensor in this case. Um, but this is the kind of uh, comparison that I think can be pretty dramatic. This is one kind of comparison. There's also the ability to kind of uh, fade between them. So I'm, I'm sorry, in the bottom left here, there's the compare mode options. We were just in the swipe mode. I just clicked the opacity option. And this is sort of the just fading between one or the other. There's also this spyglass mode, which lets you uh, see through from one layer to the other. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to show for this particular demo. Before I go on, yes, question back there. How do you get that into a web page? That's a good question. And so what we hmm, it depends on, on how much detail you want. So for one, you can share this particular link like we did before. Copy that, paste it in, and you can give your viewers your readers um, uh, the ability to, to do this themselves. You can also uh, embed the app if you want into your web page. We don't have that really um, optimized, but you, people have still done it and it still works. We have map examples as well that you can, uh, that you can use on GitHub. Um, but uh, uh, if that's something of interest to the, the media, then we could certainly build something out where that, that functionality can be easily embedded. Questions back there? So I think for some of the media and, and others, a subject matter expert reference would be useful to help mm -hmm. interpret or field some questions about this sure. that may go beyond from the developers to really people that know about uh, for sure. the uh, SUMI data or the day-night band and the effects of clouds on things and things like that. Right. Is there any plans to have a link or a reference point for these subject matter experts, people right. within NASA that may be able to answer those questions? Sure. So I think the first stop really um, is uh, you can click the send feedback link, and that routes to our support system, which covers all of the data that, that we have across NASA, which then we can route to the scientists. So it's a couple step process, but that's at least a one stop that you can go that we can get you to the right place. Um, this is Ronnie. I've been, I used to do these 15 years ago where I It'd take me half my day to get one of these out. Um, broadcasters like scene setters, but be honest, just call us. 
you know, if you're looking to do a bit more discussion or you're curiosity about it, it's what I do normally anyway. And so we can, especially if you're on deadline, we can get you somebody fairly quickly if you need more interpretation. And also, I'll just point out uh, NASA Earth Observatory. If it's a major event, like a hurricane, chances are there's somebody at NASA already working on that data biz. Where this becomes an issue is sometimes people want to do something in a much smaller area that isn't a major storm or major natural disaster, such as air quality, or it's a storm in a local area that we might not be working on. And that this is kind of, for all the calls I get for scene setters, this is a quick way to do it. So, um, but if you're doing, if something interesting comes along or you want to look at somebody, something that's in the data, give us a call. Yeah, thanks, Ronnie. Okay, great. Do you have an API so I can do that without using the interface? Yes, for sure. And that's actually uh, coming up here shortly. I'm about to wrap up, but yes, we'll get to that. Any other questions? Okay, great. So I'm going to go back to the slides to wrap up. Um, oops, that's not the slides. Here's the slides. I'll go back here. So, uh, those are just the examples we went through. There's a couple other examples in here. If you go to the slide package, you can check out some of the examples that we sort of preloaded here. Um, all right, so what's next to answer uh, one of the questions here? Um, so uh, here are two examples of what's, what we're currently working on. On the left is when you first go into the app, um, the ability to show you different, um, basically miniature stories about what's going on uh, in the recent past. And so, uh, so I'll play this demo here. Basically, you hover over and it'll give you a brief demo of, or a description of what's going on. When you click on a particular story, it will step you through step by step how to use the app and also uh, how to use different layers, what this story is. In this case, this is British Columbia wildfires. So it will sort of do, it'll, <laughs> it's, it's making my job what I'm doing right now. It's, it's basically automating that. Uh, so I'm automating myself out of a job here, I guess, which I'm happy to do. Uh, on the right uh, is an example of geostationary imagery. You probably have seen GOES R, GO16. Um, this is an example of somebody else's website at Colorado State University. Um, but this is, uh, you know, Western Hemisphere every 15 minutes updated. Um, so we'll get a, a handful of layers from, from that spacecraft uh, in here as well. So particular things like wildfires and hurricanes, they, that's, I think that's a great set of uh, products. Uh, and as Jeannie mentioned, there's, you know, more to NASA Earth Science than just WorldView. There's other uh, tools and services, Earth Data Search. If you're data focused, you can go there, find data that you need to download. There's a whole host of other tools. Uh, if you want to dig in and use the data itself, uh, there are the links that are posted here. In terms of an API, so I'd be totally remiss not to mention that WorldView wouldn't exist without Gibbs, which is Global Imagery Browse Services which is the back end which ingests and serves all of that imagery um, that you saw in WorldView. And so uh, WorldView is just one client that sits on top of that, but anybody can build their own client um, uh, and their own uh, map, basically, to interact with that imagery. So that's, that's an API right there. Um, yeah, and we actually have some, some examples on GitHub as well that, that show you how to use that API. Uh, in terms of starting points for story ideas, Ronnie already mentioned in the middle one here, Earth Observatory does a great job of, of being on top of, of what's going on uh, in the world. Uh, uh, that's, of course, the NASA.gov Earth site also has uh, all kinds of stories. In terms of data-centric stories and data itself, you can go to Earth Data, which is on the right. In terms of metrics, I just wanted to show the slide in terms of uh, what stories are popular, in, at least in terms of how people use WorldView. Uh, a lot of fires, a lot of hurricanes. That's the short answer, really. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of other stories to tell, but those are the two big ones for us, at least. Uh, we've seen a lot of use uh, from pe people have uh, from all over show interest. In terms of citations, we got this question earlier. So, um, like I mentioned, we have an open data policy. We encourage you to use it as you see fit. Um, you can cite it as NASA WorldView, or if you want to go into more, more detail into the actual satellite and instrument used. Uh, if you can embed a direct link into that WorldView, we'd appreciate that. 
Um, if you're doing social media, we have the pound or the hashtag NASA Worldview uh, hashtag. So to wrap it all up, so uh, the, the main take homes here, we have a lot of really rich data, I think, that uh, we hope can help you tell your stories, help your, your readers get engaged um, about our home planet. Um, and we hope that we will actually use this to find new stories to tell as well. So with that, uh, here's our contact information. Uh, please feel free to get in touch. Questions as well. Question right there. This is an insider question. Um, okay. Is there a recommendation for when you do that snapshot and you get the, the image download view of that, that separate image, is there guidance on whether they should use the URL or download that image then locally and put that into the article? I mean, we'd prefer, I suppose, to, to have that image embedded in your own content di distribution network um, since uh, we're not really designed to do that. We probably could if we wanted to, but uh, I think you probably want to download the image first and embed it like you would any other image. But thanks, Matt. Questions back here? Uh, Ryan, I want to toss a few softballs, for, for example. Yeah, I appreciate for that. Thank um, you. It just occurred to me again, because I've had to teach my own staff this over, every time I hire someone new, okay. um, maybe go back to Worldview uh, if, you, if you're live at all. I was wondering if you might, either you might explain or I might explain um, what the swaths are at the equator, the black spots. Sure, yeah. What sun glint is. Okay. Yeah, great ones, thanks. And what, uh, what happens near the poles as you go farther north to the projections. Okay, sure. Um, right, we get those questions all the time as well, like from the conspiracy theorists who say, well, you're hiding data, where is it? It's, what is this you know, giant hole here every day? Um, and it's, 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 we're not hiding anything. Um, uh, in this case, the, the satellite orbit uh, doesn't overlap near the equator for, for MODIS, and so you'll have these gaps from orbit to orbit. And actually, something that's related to that, which I think could be helpful, um, I'm going to turn on uh, orbit tracks. We get this question a lot as well. I forgot to uh, mention this, but we get the question of, well, when was this exact image captured? And so uh, I just turned on uh, the time so that, that the satellite passed overhead by just searching for, in this case, Terra orbit. Um, and it'll tell you the exact time when uh, any given satellite was overhead. And, uh, and you can see that, that it orbits from pole to pole. And in the center uh, of those orbits, you will sometimes get, if you have an open ocean picture here, let's see, here we go, uh, you'll have this sun glint here. And that's just the product of the sun being basically behind the camera, getting the reflection back here. But that's, that's fairly common for these polar orbiting satellites. Uh, in terms of the pole. Sometimes that's helpful if you're looking. Sometimes that's helpful if you're looking for things like oil spills. Sometimes oh, true, sun yeah. glint actually helps. Most of the time, you don't want an image with sun glint in it, but sometimes it actually shows you what you're looking for. You can see interesting patterns, particularly in yeah. uh, behind islands, uh, eddy patterns, and things like that. You can also see sun uh, oil spills and things like that. Yeah, great point. Yeah, you know, we should also have a workshop of all these tips and tricks of how to, you know, find certain events. I think there's very useful tips for each kind of natural event. That's a good one for oil spills. Um, and then actually what we can do, I'll do a sort of quick time lapse here. Um, I'm going to change the time scale to months here and, um, and zoom out quite a bit. And um, I'll cache this in memory. And you'll see basically the entire map move up and down. And that's entirely a product of uh, where the sun is hitting the Earth throughout the year. So it gets darker at the North Pole during the, our winter and vice versa the other way. So um, we'll often get questions about that too. Why can't I see uh, Finland in the winter? Oh, it's dark there. It's a good question though. I mean, it's still light there sometimes, right? But not the entire day, or much less than the day. Any other questions? Suggestions? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a geek on this. I have, I have one more, because um, I see people get this wrong, particularly colleagues in the media all the time. 
people want to make comparisons, image pairs are nice, but you should compare things to the same time of year. So you want to say there's a drought in California in September, don't show what the weather, don't show California in May because it's a completely different water season. So you want to show a drought. This tool lets you jump back to 2016. Okay, it's cloudy. Look at 2015. Okay, it's, you know, you can bounce through the years and look at the same season when you're trying to make comparisons because otherwise you're lying with data. Right. That's a good point, actually. And something I didn't mention is, so we have the full record for a lot of these spacecraft. So in this case, uh, Terra launched in 99 and data started coming in in the year 2000. So we can go back to the year 2000 if you want to compare sea ice in the year 2000 to sea ice in the year 2018, um, you're able to do that sort of comparison that way. Got a question back there? Uh, microphone on the way. process. Mm -hmm. Could you run through how we might download, let's just say a week? Okay. Are, are you looking in this case for images from each day, you mean? Actually, or the I'm, data itself? I'm looking for data that I work for a program, project called My NASA Data out of Langley. Uh -huh. uh, we work with students and teachers, which I know is not the audience necessarily, sure. but um, would love to be able to use this tool with that audience and, okay. and have um, those folks uh, be able to, to graph those data. Okay. Um, so for that audience, they would be interested in, in getting individual images from each day, for example, or? Um, right, so um, let's see. So one example I suppose I can do, I'll pick, uh, I'll pick an area. And what, what will happen, so you can define your area, take your image. I'll get a pretty low resolution one to speed it up. Take your image. Uh, you can go back to the app, um, change the day. And if you go back to the camera, it should have that same exact box still there. So um, and I'm gonna flip through these two tabs here. So you always keep the same bounding box that way. I mean, there's other ways you can do it too. You can hack this URL, you can change the date to the next day, and it'll, it'll pull that. I don't know if you wanna tell your students to do that or not, but I mean, you, you can welcome to do that. Um, it depends on the level of detail you want to go into. I mean, you can also make a script to just get the imagery down itself on a regular basis, or you can, you know, use this interface to, to, to take things one at a time. Yep, there's a question right here. Yeah. Mike on the way, I think. Jeannie, thanks. Just, just poking around on this. Is there any yep. way to get a spherical projection of this? Uh, like a web mercator or Google Maps kind of thing? Oh, you mean like an actual sphere, yeah, right. Um, not in this app directly, I mean, you can, we have examples, actually this is good for those who are, um, <clears throat> excuse me, technically inclined. I'll go to GitHub um, and go to, uh, let's see, NASA Gibbs. Um, I haven't actually tried to ever search for the product here, project. I think I can just do, Oh, yeah, right. Oh, there it is right there. Um, so I went to github.com slash NASA dash Gibbs. Um, <clears throat> so there's these web examples here, which I mentioned earlier. And basically, they're bare bones examples of how to, uh, how to use, basically, you know, here's a basic map. It's the same imagery we just saw in Worldview, but it's just a one day of a map that you can pan and zoom. There's also... Um, things like in, uh, there's a three-dimensional sort of web mapping client called Cesium, it's an open source library. I click that and, you know, you can get that sort of thing there. Um, and so you can, you know, create these maps yourself. We're actually, one of the future things I didn't mention, we're looking at uh, starting to do vertical profiles, which is a way to look at sort of um, vertical structures of clouds and aerosols. Um, and to do that and match it up with, uh, with the flat maps that we already have, I think we'll, we'll need to use a sphere. So you can see the sphere here and then the vertical profile here. Um, and so we'll probably eventually have that option to use the sphere within Worldview itself, but that's a little further down the road. So another year-ish, two-ish. I don't want to <laughs> scare too many people over here when I expect it to be ready. Do we have any final questions from reporters in the room? Okay, no questions on chat? Feel free to come up and chat with us, me, anybody here. So thank you to. Yeah. Thank you.
you to Ryan and our panel and their team, and we'll be concluding this session. Great. Thank you all very much.